Hey, Anna McHugh here, taking a look at mushrooms on a beautiful Wednesday morning in Raleigh, North Carolina. And I have found a gorgeous specimen of the Macrolepiata genus. Um, in common parlance, this would be called a parasol mushroom. It is uh, considered edible and good. This one is in, uh, again, really good condition. So I'm going to take it home and have my way with it. Uh, but first I wanna describe it to you because it's uh, a fairly uh, common genus. And um, you know we find them in ones and twos in woodland areas uh, all over North America. I am gonna call this a macro lepiata mushroom and leave it at that. Uh, oftentimes you'd find this mushroom identified as macro lepiata prochera. Uh, that is a European species. So we do have a lot of edible and good parasol mushrooms in North America, but they are not technically macro lepiata prochera. That said, uh, a lot of them don't have names and I certainly can't uh, you know, do a field identification that would make me uh, any more confident than I am at this very moment. So uh, as far as the features of this mushroom, um, you have a really classic sort of cap and stem affair. It gets its common name obviously because it looks a good bit like a parasol. So you have, you know, this brown little, uh, you know, dot uh, nipple at the top. You also have a really lovely sort of fluffy uh, cap that has, uh, you know, little um, sort of fluffy uh, scabrousness here. So basically these are, um, you know, little bits of the cap that are darker in color. And as the cap expands, that breaks and it leaves this really distinctive sort of uh, pattern of, uh, you know, radiating dark scales of tissue. Um, this is very different from what you would see on an Amanita mushroom, uh, which is a, you know, a genus that looks quite similar, has some very toxic species. They oftentimes have warts and things on the cap, but those are, uh, you know, not a part of the cap. Technically, they're tissue that comes from another part of the fruiting body. And so oftentimes you can easily rub or wear them off. Whereas in uh, the case of the Macrolepiata mushrooms, this uh, scabrousness and scaliness actually is a part of the cap. So that's that can you know kind of help you distinguish what's going on there um it is a gilled mushroom you have a really sort of um you know lovely white to cream colored uh gills and then um you know they kind of take on a parchment color when they dry out and get uh, a little elderly here's an example of uh, a smaller one that has definitely got uh you know darker colored gills at this point um, this is an important feature as well because there is a poisonous, not deadly, look-alike for parasol mushrooms, uh, and that is called the green spored parasol. It's probably more common than any of our edible parasols, of course. It grows in grass. It is relatively large and like, you know, um, fat. Oftentimes our, uh, you know, macrolepiatas are a little more tall and stately. Uh, but the biggest difference is that the uh, gills of the green spored parasol and its spores are sort of this like grotesque pickly green color. And so as they mature, instead of having this, you know, pleasing sort of creamy color, you get this sort of green brown uh, look. So it's important to understand how to distinguish between them. Uh, again, the green sport parasol, chlorophyllum uh, molybdites, it will not kill you. Um, it will make you very, very sick. So obviously if you have a, you know, a comorbidity or something, it can be quite dangerous. On the whole, you know, people who are poisoned with them, they just feel really bad for a day or two. Uh, so, you know, you want to be very mindful of this gill color because they do look quite similar uh, to our edible parasols. Um, additionally, you have a ring on the stem. This ring is oftentimes quite movable, easy uh, to remove. Actually, this other mushroom that I was looking at, I removed the, uh, the ring, you know, in one piece without too much difficulty. You'll see that you have a, sort of a double, uh, you know, uh, layered ring, meaning you have a ring of tissue and then a little additional sort of, um, you know, uh, like more, um, scrappy outer ring. So you have one nice contiguous ring and then you have sort of, uh, you know, scraps and rem remnants on a, a second layer there. Again, this is a very movable ring. And so oftentimes you'll find mushrooms where it has um, fallen off or has uh, slipped down the stem, something like that. So this is not the most consistent feature, but you will see that on, uh, you know, good specimens. And then um, the finally looking at the stem, what you have is sort of a, a brown flecking appearance and those are essentially stretch marks. So you'll see a lighter colored tissue underneath these sort of brown 
uh, you know, stretches. And that's, that's really quite distinctive uh, for, you know, different macro lepiata species. So I always look for that. And it's kind of an attractive look too. It sort of looks like a, you know, um, uh, snake scales a little bit. Uh, so it's, anyway, it's, it's definitely noticeable in almost all circumstances. And then finally, at the base of the stem, um, you know, you have sort of a, a bit of a, a stump, a little bit of a bulb, but unlike Amanita mushrooms, which again is a large genus that contains some pretty toxic species, uh, it is not like a cup, it's not a remnant of other tissue that's like a protective layer for the baby mushroom. It's just sort of a like, okay, the mycelium terminated here, made a big old blob, and then pushed out a big old blobby mushroom. So uh, at the end of the day, I would caution people just to be um, aware that white gilled mushrooms does put you into more advanced identification territory because uh, Amanitas are white gilled mushrooms. And the, again, the, the toxicity of some of those species is really uh, enormous. And so, um, you know, even though they are fairly easy to recognize and identify, and once you see them a few times, you kind of get the gestalt of them. Um, it's still very important to be cautious and conscious of the fact that uh, this is a good edible that has some uh, very, very poisonous uh, species that look similar. Anyway, I hope you have a good day, find tons of mushrooms, and I'll see you next time.